Good morning. Hi, Carla. Hi, good morning. So I want to know everything that is everything about you. So tell me. Okay, so I have, uh, grew up here, born here. Um, I knew pretty early on that I really wanted to do something related to the fashion industry, whether it was working for you know, a well-known brand, um, on a retail or corporate level, or at, at this point now, um, I guess making and designing my own clothes. Um, I got involved with an organization called El Paso Fashion Week four years ago. Uh, Robert and Hector Chavez reached out to me and they were so generous in, you know, letting me, you know, asking me. They knew I was a, a fashion design student. Mm -hmm. And they were like, hey, you know, we're putting on this production um, at the end of October. Do you want to be a part of it? At this point, it was like the end of September, beginning of October. And I was kind of like, you know, this is this is going to take all my time and all my money. But, um, you know, absolutely, I'll, let's do it. It worked out perfectly because uh, the original location of Joanne Fabrics was closing. So they had this huge, um, like, a liquidation type of thing. So I got a ton of fabric for super cheap, and I just kind of started making some sketches. Um, that first collection was called Back to Love. Uh, it was pretty much inspired by a lot of pieces that um, I saw my mom's old photographs and the like, pieces that she would wear and how beautiful they looked. So I kind of started building, like, this... Um, this look, I guess, that I that I that I was drawn to, and I presented it uh, maybe three weeks later. So I was able to to push out about ten looks. Um, I used a lot of bold colors that first year: pinks, blues, florals. Um, and the years to follow after that, I started kind of finding like my aesthetic, what I was comfortable with. Um, that collection that followed it the next year was geared more towards like the monotone colors, so I was doing whites, ivories, gray, black, one floral print and one like a stripe print. Mm -hmm. um, and after that, I came out with an all black collection. Um, everything about that look was black. My personal challenge for me was that I didn't want to repeat fabrics, which is super common to do in a fashion collection, but I kind of did uh, 17 looks, all with completely different fabrics, so nothing was repeated. I used everything from like a transparent velvet lace to real feathers on my clothes. Um, and I kind of felt that that was the first year that that was 100% me in that collection. I felt like um, I was identifying like the most with those pieces. And one of the biggest compliments I got was from a lo another fellow designer who now lives in Puerto Rico, Christian Bernard. Um, he and I became friends about a, like we got closer about a year ago he has been presenting here for four years he said I didn't know this was your collection until someone told me but when I you know looking at it he thought to himself this has to be hers because this is a hundred percent like her mm -hmm. like I feel like she's in this this collection so that was a, that was a huge compliment to me and I kind of decided okay from now on I'm gonna try and stick with the all black thing just because it's it's my favorite color it's um, it's comfortable for me. I think black is timeless and classic and elegant and it can be manipulated in so many ways to be fresh or classic, conservative, sexy, modest, anything you want. So after that all black collection I presented um, again with the first time resort fashion show with El Paso Fashion Week. Um, it was a all swimsuits so and I also did a completely all black swimsuit collection. I incorporated real flowers to have some color um, and then this past year, 2018, I did the El Paso Fashion Week show, um, incorporated some white, some ivories, just to kind of to mix it up a little bit. And I was also um, lucky enough to be able to present with uh, Laura Rayborn's show with Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week. Mm -hmm. And um, with that show, I was uh, given permission to use the Kendra Scott jewelry. So my girls had, you know, the, the jewels around their neck and the earrings and... Um, yeah, I, I think I've just really found that black is my comfort zone, uh -huh. and I love it, and I just love how it can be manipulated, but coming this year, now 2019, there might be a little bit of a change, a little mix-up, just to really push me out of my comfort zone, um, but yeah, that's pretty much how I got started. Everything that I, I learned, um, that I know I learned in school, and my mom has taught me, because my mom wanted to do the same thing when she was younger, so growing up, she would make her own clothes. Um, and for her siblings as well. She was one of 12. 
So um, she taught herself <laughs> and now consequently has taught me and she's been the one helping me this entire time. Oh, how sweet. And where do you find all your inspiration? So I think the, the biggest, I guess, area or moment in time that inspires me is it has to be the era where Coco Chanel made her debut into the world. I thought there was just something so fresh and revolutionary that she decided one day, like, I'm going to wear my lover's pants and shirt and a button down. And that's how the suit, like, came to be. She was kind of like, I'm done with skirts, I'm done with dresses, you know, everything is too binding, too uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, she started off making hats and one day was like, I'm going to make clothes for women. And it was so controversial at the time. Women were not allowed to wear pants. Mm -hmm. And she just kind of was like, no, this is what's gonna, this is what's going to be. And I mean, mm -hmm. decades later, she is like, I mean, she's not here with us anymore, obviously, but she left a legacy and is like a powerhouse and just as uh, just such a staple in women's fashion. I mean, her story yeah. in general, mm -hmm. I mean, growing up to like everything that she did, she was, I mean, unstoppable. Yeah. She, she had tons of confidence. Mm -hmm. um, you have tons of confidence. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love your energy. Thank I love you. your laugh. Thank you. Um, where do you, where do you find your confidence? I think Getting anybody to come out on Topic Tuesday, mm -hmm. you know, is a confidence building for women. Um, where do you find all that? Where did you Where did you grasp it? At what age? Um, I'm gonna say this confidence is pretty like newfound for me. Um, I wasn't the most confident person in high school growing up. Um, even in middle school, I was kind of bullied a little bit. Um, high school was, even though they were great years for me, I was super involved in so many organizations. I want to say this confidence kind of surfaced over the past two, three years. Um, it's, I think it's just been brewing. It's been a collection of all the women I've been surrounded with, from my best friends to my, my cousins, the women in my family, my aunts. It's just I see who they are and how firm they are and how confident they are in, in who they are. And it's just, it's very inspiring. So I want to say that I am just a collection of all the women that I've been surrounded with that have been um, both positive and negative, you know, roles in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and I've taken what I want and I've told myself who I want to be. And every day it's just a constant reminder, like, you know, struggles and setbacks will happen, but you keep pushing forward. And every day, like, there's an opportunity to better and to grow and just to you know, choose to be happy. I think it's a choice. So, I mean, it's not always easy. I don't always, like, feel my best or, like, I I tell myself, like, why am I doing this? Like, why am I doing this, you know, this design thing if it's, it, I'm not going to say it hasn't taken off, but obviously, like, every designer wants to be, like, this big brand name. But I'm actually really happy with the direction I'm going in right now. I think if I can continue to do it and if I'm allowed to keep doing it, even if it's just to make me happy, then that's all I can ask for. I, lo I love that. What you. would you tell um, an entrepreneur or mm -hmm. a young girl um, watching this? Um, I think the biggest thing is that I would say is to take chances <clears throat> and find your passion. Like, I, I think, you, you know this too, you just told me your story now sitting here a few minutes ago, um, that you were just determined to have a space and you wanted what you wanted. And I think if you if you like manifest it and you tell yourself, you know, this is what I want, this is what I'm, I'm going to make it happen, it's going to happen. It's, it's going to take time. Don't, don't lose patience. Like, you know, just keep working towards it. It could be, you know, for me, starting with a small 10 piece collection to this past year, not doing two fashion shows here locally and given corporate permission to use Kendra Scott jewelry mm -hmm. to accessorize my girl. So, I mean, everything falls into place the way it should. Timing is everything. Um, if you ever feel like you're running out of time, you're not. Like, you're exactly where you're supposed to be at any given moment. Oh, that's so sweet. I think everybody would benefit from listening to that. Um, where are you now on social media? I feel like it's... I was looking at your page and stuff. It's so busy. <laughs> a lot of networking on there. Mm -hmm. How has that changed your life? Um, so, it's, it's funny because I just... I was telling myself the other day, I really need to 
get active on my like business page. There's maybe like three posts on there that I just started doing. But the page I have now, <clears throat> my, my Instagram account started as my professional page and then I'm like, no, I'm just going to mix both, but it doesn't work. I need to, I need to keep both separate. Um, but I think just posting genuine things, like true to myself, everything on there is either me traveling or, you know, things that I'm passionate about. Dance. I'm on a dance team called La Femme. Like I'll post mm -hmm. about them, and that's another like I, just a big influence in my life. They're just it's a group of women that are confident and different in their own right. Um, posting family, posting friends, you know, just anything. I I think as long as you're genuine and true, um, you become relatable to a lot more people than you think, and I think that's been um, my driving force. I guess I guess behind my social media is just being. 100% like true to myself. Yeah, it's true. Um, if I could share the my Instagram right now that has Samantha Nicole used to be the Your New Image, just a business page. Mm -hmm. um, and I just really posted everything that I like that which just kind of turned, I mean, everything that I do is, a, is truly a hobby. I really, truly enjoy doing mm -hmm. it. So when transitioning to having a business page, I mean, it was like everything that I was posting was kind of hard because I was yeah. like, I'm, <laughs> Can I have to post it double, <laughs> right? But I mean, I think that what you're saying is is true. You can have your personal and your business, mm -hmm. and it just takes the same amount of of journey, I guess, to to, to enjoy make both. both. Yeah, yeah, exactly. because you're gonna have to to. I think I now I share a little bit more about family or mm -hmm. you know different stuff on my page, but it's still the same thing because I'm like we were watching the Oscars on Sunday, mm -hmm. right? And I was like, well, I really, truly like like watching this. I like all the award shows. So I'm like, okay, I have to share from, on both, you know? <laughs> yeah. But then you just kind of yeah. get used to it. Mm -hmm. um, what? Where do you see yourself in two years? <clears throat> Whew, that's, and that, this is actually a question that I, I kind of ask myself every single day, but I'm like, where do you see yourself in six months, in one year, in a year and a half, in two years? Um, honestly, I am currently working as a um, the management team at Kendra Scott here in El Paso. Mm -hmm. I would absolutely love to grow with that company. Um, I think it's, it's, it's a really, truly amazing company to work for. The company itself does so much. Um, Kendra Scott kind of built this, this jewelry fashion empire, but at the same time, it's backed by this constant ability and you know, privilege to do good in our community. So we have tons of events that give uh, donations back that raise money to people and organizations that are that are more than deserving. So to be able to maybe someday grow to a, a corporate position um, with that company would be a dream come true. But at the same time, I don't want to really let go of like the design aspect. Mm -hmm. And even if it's just if it becomes a hobby at some point, I would absolutely love to just continue creating and designing because it's, it's really in like my soul's urge to want to create and make things. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, it kind of brings me to my center and it's just such a great creative outlet that I would never want to let go of it. So whether it's here in El Paso or somewhere else, you know, I'm always going to find a way to be involved um, putting something that I manifested and created in my mind out you know, for someone else to see. Mm -hmm. That's nice. What, where, okay, it's a new year. Mm -hmm. What are your resolutions? Who? so my biggest one was just to do more things with intention. Um, I kind of felt the past few years um, I was doing things just to do them without really like a conscious effort. And this year I'm like, whether it's going to be design or my everyday day-to-day -day tasks at work, um, I'm going to do it with complete and full intention. I'm going to be present. I'm going to do, like, put my entire heart and soul into it. Um, and that is really going to fall back into what I do with design. I kind of always leave, <coughs> excuse me, everything till last minute. And I find myself two weeks before the show starts uh, making and, like, finishing things. And it's so much stress. And I tell myself, why, you know, why do I leave everything to last minute if I'm so passionate about it? So now it's kind of like, okay, I'm going to, dedicate time, hopefully daily, if not weekly, to really working on improving my, my sketches, um, improving my, my aesthetic as a designer, kind of really playing around with like fabrics and textures and, 
you know, m trying to make something not so much different, but make something that I feel is gonna remind or like someone sees it, they're gonna be like, that's one of Carla's pieces. Like, that's that has to be hers. Um, I think ever since I was told that, it's now in my head that you have to create with yourself in your pieces. You can't just kind of blindly make something um, without putting a part of you in it. So whether it's, like I said, with design, or with work, with my family, with my friends, a uh, significant other, like I want to be present, I want to be in the moment, and I want to, you know, do things with complete intention. I have a habit, I've had a habit of constantly being on my phone when I'm with people that I care about. Um, and I realize how much time that really takes away from the moment that you're with them. So that's also part of it is like when I'm, you know, hanging out with someone or with my friends or, you know, whoever, my phone, if it's not entirely necessary that it be out, it's going to be put away. It's so crazy that you say that because I feel like the times that I've met you, the times that I've been around you, you have, I've not seen you on your phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. So I don't, I mean... It's good that you notice those things, mm -hmm. but from someone on the outside looking in, I've seen you be in in the moment at the times that you've been. And if you ask my family, like, they call me the texter, because growing up, like, my phone has been glued to my hand. And I started noticing that when my, my cousins and I went to the Khalid concert mm -hmm. last year. And I pretty much recorded the entire thing. Like, a song would come on, and I, there was I, like, recording it, like, and just, like, singing through the phone. And when we got back to, like, to our, our cousin's house... Um, and they were asking, like, oh, no, I didn't record that much. I barely posted anything. And they're like, well, Carla recorded the whole thing. Like, you can just replay the concert from her phone. And I realized, like, that's true. Like, I, I'm going to relive it through my screen, but I missed, like, being in the moment during the concert, you know? And now those videos are sitting on my phone, and I'm like, they were absolutely right. Which I love going back and rewatching them. I do the same when I went to go see Coldplay, like, three years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, it just, it gives me, like, such a, like, it's just such yeah. a nice, yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, I love having them, but I did realize, like, Well, okay. maybe only for concerts. For concerts? <laughs> I'm going to go by myself. I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They're going to watch this, and they're going to be like, okay, girl. Just kidding, guys. We're going to the next one. <laughs> but definitely for, for other things, it's going to be like, yeah, I would much rather just be in the moment. And where, um, okay, so our my last question for you is, if you are living by a quote, living mm -hmm. through affirmation anything that you're living by what can, what can you share with us my I think one of my favorite quotes uh, there's two actually my the first one is kind of funny it's uh, from Karl Lagerfeld who is like my my number one um, it's I'm very much down to earth just not this earth mm. and I'm, <laughs> I like that I love it <laughs> I, that's one of my favorites the second one being um, a quote I'm pretty sure it's by Beyonce but it says um, I don't like to gamble, but if there's one thing I'm willing to bet on, it's myself. Love it. So definitely those two. Okay, we're going to end on that. We will share at the bottom of the page where we can find you. Do you have a web page? Oh, it's under construction. It'll be out probably in a couple weeks. Um, but right now I'm, I'm working on my Instagram and I'm revamping my Facebook page. But my, uh, I guess my little, my company name or my brand name is Ivana Kuburu. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. And we will talk to you all soon. Bye. Bye.